Lapel pins let you proudly show off where you've been or where you stand. From an event you've attended or your political beliefs to your professional affiliation or your favorite sports team. Lapel pins cost pennies to produce, but some are collector's items worth thousands of dollars. They may be tiny, but they're out there in huge numbers. This one company turns out about 5 million lapel pins a year. It all starts with a sketch of the pin design and from that, the master, a negative made of magnesium, a type of metal. They'll make copies of this master to create a production mold. But first, using what's called a coping saw, they cut out the front and back pieces of the master. Using a dispenser about the size of a sewing needle, they glue the pieces together with epoxy. It takes five minutes to dry. Then they cast enough copies of the master to fill up a rubber disc. After tracing the outlines, a worker uses a surgical knife to meticulously carve out the cavities. He softens the rubber with paint thinner to enable precision cuts. Then he places a copy of the master in each cavity. Another disc goes on top, then it's into a machine called a vulcanizer for one hour. This machine uses heat and pressure to cure the rubber, making it as hard as a car tire. It also melds the rubber around each master copy, embedding the detail. This will be the production mold for producing this pin design. Now, using a surgical knife again for precision, they carve out sprues, channels that during the casting process will direct the flow of molten metal to the cavities. They also make smaller, curved channels, called runners, to filter out any air or dirt particles. It's crucial to position the sprues and runners correctly because this mold produces an entire line of a particular pin. Mess up and they'd have to remake the mold from scratch. Next, they insert a centimeter long brass tack called a post into each cavity. It'll later fasten to a clasp, attaching the pin to clothing. The post goes in now rather than later so that it will fuse to the back of the lapel pin during casting. Now to close the mold, they align the buttons on one half with the depressions in the other half. The mold then goes into what's called a spin casting machine. Using a cast iron ladle that can withstand the fiery temperature, they pour in molten metal, either pewter, zinc, or a tin alloy. As the machine spins, centrifugal force propels the metal into every nook and cranny of the cavities. After a minute of spinning, 400 rotations, the mold comes out. The metal takes about five minutes to cool and harden. The factory remelts the excess metal for the next batch. Next, a brass clasp called a clutch goes onto the post. Now the lapel pins go for an hour long wash in soap and water and abrasive stones. The stones smooth out any rough edges. The pins go into the electroplating tank for a surface coating of metal. How many coats and the types of metal vary with the design. An electric current draws the metal particles onto the pins, plating them thoroughly. These pins first get copper plating, then nickel plating, then gold plating. Now it's time to paint the lapel pins. Workers follow a numerical guide, like a paint-by-numbers kit. They paint each pin individually using minute quantities of epoxy paint. They control the paint syringe with a foot pedal. Once the paint dries, a machine called a pad printer gathers up ink and stamps on the tiny details, the ones too small to paint by hand. Pierce the post through the fabric, secure it with the clutch, and this lapel pin is now ready to wear.